Hello, thank you for joining with me. We are in A Course in Miracles workbook for students, part two of the workbook, section 13, What is a Miracle? And we are on lesson 347. Anger must come from judgment. Judgment is the weapon I would use against myself to keep the miracle away from me. Father, I want what goes against my will and do not want what is my will to have. Footnote 166, Romans 7.19 For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. In the above passage, the conflict is not between what I want and what I do, but rather is between what I want and my will, between what I think I want and what I really want. Straighten my mind, my father, it is sick. But you have offered healing, and I choose to claim your gift today. And so I give all judgment to the one you gave to me to judge for me. He sees what I behold, and yet he knows the truth. He looks on pain, and yet he understands it is not real. And in his understanding it is healed. He gives the miracles my dreams would hide from my awareness. Let him judge today. I do not know my will, but he is sure it is your own, and he will speak for me and call your miracle to come to me. Listen today. Be very still and hear the gentle voice of God assuring you that he has judged you as the son he loves. Footnote 167. Psalm 46.10 Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. In the above reference, rather than being asked to be still and know God's exaltedness, you are asked to be still and hear God's voice assuring you that he has judged you as the son he loves. And now we will read the commentary. We have a practice suggestion today by Robert Perry. Anger must come from judgment. Judgment is the weapon I would use against myself to keep the miracle away from me. T today the ideas for the day go from two lines to three lines, which means they have tripled in length since just seven lessons ago. I confess that I find it harder to repeat these longer ideas throughout the day. If you're the same, here are some suggestions that might make it easier. Write the idea down on a note card and pull the card out for practical periods. Find a part of the idea that speaks the most to you and focus on repeating that part. Spend time in the morning memorizing the idea so fully that it just rolls off your tongue the rest of the day. Reword the idea in a way that captures the gist of it, but is shorter and speaks to you personally. On that last point, don't be afraid to reword the idea as long as you stay reasonably faithful to the meaning. The Course reminds us of this more than once saying you need not use these exact words and it is not the particular words you use that matter. Now I will read the commentary by Robert Perry, I mean by Ellen Watson, excuse me. From the sublime heights of yesterday's lesson, I would forget all these things except your love, all things except your love. We return to the level of our split mind in which we attack ourselves, keeping away the miracle with judgment and attack. The previous lesson was miracle-mindedness. Here we see why we do not always experience that state of mind. We actively keep it away from ourselves with judgment and attack. The process of the Course involves learning complete honesty with ourselves. We learn to recognize and admit the duplicity of our own minds. Father, I want what goes against my will and do not want what is my will to have. My will is my right-mindedness, forgetting everything except God's love 
and yet we seem to want something else and to actively resist having the love of God flooding our minds. I love the next couple of lines. Straighten my mind, my father. It is sick. I love those lines because of their stark simplicity and because of the contrast they offer to the frothy denial of our inner darkness that is prevalent in so many circles. The course does not pull any punches. It does not whitewash our problems. There are times when no other assessment fits. Our minds are sick. It is sick to want what goes against my true will and to actively resist my own well-being. Self-destruction is always pathological. When we look honestly at the fact that we are literally pushing away our own peace of mind by active choices we make, it ought to be repugnant. We see that we have been doing what we have been doing. Our saner self will say, this is sick. And so we ask the Father to straighten my mind. That always reminds me of the science fiction book by Zena Henderson that I read as a young man called The People, No Different Flesh. In it were certain persons who could telepathically enter into another person's mind and sort their thoughts, soothing their inner turmoil and pain. The idea appealed to me so much that I used to pray, Sort me, Father when I felt my thoughts in chaos and confusion, and it seemed to work. I was pleasantly surprised to see this similar phrase here, validating my early experience. Straighten my mind. We enable the straightening of our minds by giving all our judgment to the Holy Spirit and asking Him to judge for us. He sees what we see, and yet He knows the truth. He is looking at the same evidence I am looking at, but he knows the pain is not real. The evidence means something entirely different to him. To me, the evidence of my eyes seems to prove that separation, pain, loss, and death are real. When I bring all this to him and ask him to straighten my mind, he will show me that what I see does not mean what I think it means. He will use what I thought proved my guilt to reveal my innocence. He gives the miracles my dreams would hide from my awareness. Listen today, be very still, and hear the gentle voice for God, assuring you that He has judged you as the Son He loves. And now I will lead us into meditation. Please close your eyes if you are able to. Anger must come from judgment. Judgment is the weapon I would use against myself to keep the miracle away from me. Father, I want what goes against my will and do not want what is my will to have. Straighten my mind, my Father. It is sick. But you have offered healing and I choose to claim your gift today. And so I give all judgment to the one you gave to me to judge for me. He sees what I behold, and yet he knows the truth. He looks on pain, and yet he understands it is not real. And in his understanding it is healed. He gives the miracles my dreams would hide from my awareness. Let him judge today. I do not know my will but he is sure it is your own, and he will speak for me and call your miracle to come to me. Anger must come from judgment. Judgment is the weapon I would use against myself to keep the miracle away from me.
Thank you so much for joining me in that meditation. And now we will read, What is the Miracle? This is commentary by Alan Watson. Paragraph 4, Sentence 1. The miracle is taken first on faith because to ask for it implies the mind has been made ready to conceive of what it cannot see and does not understand. Faith. Yes, A Course in Miracles asks for faith, at least at the beginning. The miracle is taken first, taken first on faith. This is a fairly traditional meaning for the word faith. The American Heritage Dictionary defines faith as belief that does not rest on logical proof or material evidence. And that is what is being asked of us. We are being asked to receive the miracle, the change of perception, the vision of our brother's innocence, without any proof or material evidence. We are being asked to look on devastation such as sickness or the harm done by someone's unloving actions and to believe that what we see is false without material evidence. This is not an easy thing to do, to believe in something we cannot see. And yet, if our false perception has blinded us, has blinded us to reality, and we are now perceiving the projections of our own minds in place of truth, then obviously the truth is now something we do not see. And since what our mind chooses to see is what we see, the mind must change before we can perceive truly. We have to choose to change our mind before we see the evidence, because in order for the miracle to manifest, our minds must be the first, must first be made ready to conceive of what they cannot see and do not understand. In other words, we must make a choice on faith. We must decide that we desire to see something we cannot now see and something we do not understand. This reminds me very much of those early lessons in the workbook, workbook, lessons 27 and 28. Above all else I want to see and above all else I want to see things differently. That choice has to be made before we can see anything. We must want to see in order to see. That is the faith being talked about here. It is a choice, a decision we must make. We must want to see our brother innocent. We must want only love. We must be willing to see things differently. Only then will we see miracles. Thank you so much for joining with me today in Lesson 347. Anger must come from judgment. Judgment is the weapon I would use against myself to keep the miracle away from me. I love you. Thank you.